I love Christmas trees, I think they're wonderful and I particularly love Christmas tree lights. They've got great festive associations for me, but I also think of something else when I see Christmas tree lights, and that's DNA. And the reason is because DNA and Christmas tree lights are both faced with the same problem. And it's the problem of how do you take something which is very long, potentially very tangly and very breakable, and get it into a small space. Now, DNA is the classic example of this kind of molecule. In width, it's only a few tens of atoms across, and atoms, of course, are absolutely tiny. But if you take the DNA out of a human cell and you spread it out, you will find it reaches for about two meters. So tiny, tiny, tiny width, but incredibly long in proportion. And the real problem is the cell has to squeeze that DNA into a nucleus, and a nucleus is very small. It's only a few fractions of a millimeter across. So you've got something two meters long that you have to get into something that's a few fractions of a millimeter in dimensions. So how do you do it? Well, it might seem that the most obvious thing that would happen is the cell would get rid of everything else in the nucleus so that it has as much space as possible to cram in the DNA. In fact, it does quite the opposite. As well as DNA, the nucleus is absolutely stuffed full of a particular type of protein called a histone. And there are millions of copies of these histone proteins in a nucleus. And these proteins join together to form groups. And then DNA actually wraps around these groups of histones. It coils around them really tightly. And what this means is instead of being a long, tangly, potentially breakable structure, the DNA becomes very organised and a very compact structure. And it can all be squeezed inside the nucleus. Now, if that's seeming a bit counterintuitive, it's probably worth going back to our example of the Christmas tree lights, because they've got exactly the same problem. So after Christmas, I'm going to be putting away the Christmas decorations, and there are three strands of lights on this tree. If I'm a bit fed up or a bit tired or miserable because I'm having to put away the Christmas decks, I'll be very tempted to take off those lights and just shove them in a box. And if I do that, they'll take up a lot of space. If, on the other hand, I cut myself a little piece of cardboard and I wrap the Christmas tree lights around it, then I'll find that they take up much less space. There you go. Lots of space, not much space at all. Same length of Christmas tree lights. And so you can see that creating structure actually allows you to get something that's long and thin into a much smaller volume. The other great advantage, of course, is that I've got three strands of lights on this tree. If I just shove them all in a box, they'll get tangled. Next year when I need to decorate the tree again, they'll all be caught up around each other. I'll probably break some of them as I try and take them apart. So that's how the cell has solved the problem. The histone proteins act like the cardboard that we wrap the Christmas tree lights around. But there's one incredibly important difference. Histone proteins are much more than cellular cardboard. The cell can actually add tiny chemical modifications, called epigenetic modifications, to these histone proteins. And when it does, that has an incredible impact. It can change the way that the nearby genes are expressed. And this has enormous implications in human health and human disease.